All right, so apparently whenever I say, um, uh, whenever I put a time in the community post, whenever I say I'm going to stream at this given time, uh, I guess just add like 45 minutes to whatever I say because I have really horrendous time management skills. That glare is going to bother me. I don't even know how I'm able to put out like normally edited YouTube videos, let alone do these live streams because I'm so fucking horrific with um, sticking to a time. I originally said today 7.30, but not going to lie, I was pretty hungover today. Normally I don't get hangovers that bad, but I had, man, my head was bumping today. It was just bad. I couldn't, I had like light sensitivity and all that shit. It's gone now, which is a good thing because these fucking lights that I always talk about. Let's see if I can rotate this thing around. There's one here. And then there's this fucking big ass one right here. Yeah, that's not it's not fun staring into those for uh hours at a time if your eyes have light sensitivity, so glad that's over. Um and I'm here and I feel relatively decent. I made a really bomb ass turkey sandwich using premium see the secret to making a good turkey sandwich is you got to use premium meats breads and cheeses you can't just get that ice oscar meyer prepackaged shit you got to go to the deli and actually ask for them to cut you some fresh shit the good ingredients is how you make uh you turn a bobo ass turkey sandwich from home into like some shit that you'd actually pay for while i'm animated what's up chat I, uh, so far we got a Good, good amount of uh, comments here so far. Um, Chicago Transit Authority was finally able to make it on a Saturday night. Um, I'll be interested to see how this stream does. It being a Saturday and all, it's raining like all hell at my house in uh, Jacksonville right now. It's fucking annoying. Um, starving autist, uh, you're catching it right on the ground floor, buddy. You're not missed. You haven't missed anything yet. Um, Newt Wallen is also streaming. Is he? Wow. If, for those of you who don't know, Newt was the one who plagiarized the uh, AVGN Monster Madness scripts back in the, what a couple years ago at this point. Why would you do something like that? You'd have to be pretty fucking stupid to think you could get away with plagiarism in any way, shape, or form. Um, all right, just checking out the content uh, comments here. Oh, Chicago. My, my real name is Chicago. Are you the same Chicago that used to come to my karaoke gigs and sing karaoke at, like, the Applebee's and shit? Is that is this the same Chicago? Because if so, that's going to be fucking really weird. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, so, yeah, we are, we are trying to... Okay, good. I'm glad you're not that Chicago because that guy was a fuck... Now that you're not him, I can say it. That guy was a fucking creep. And I'm glad that uh, you're not him. He weirded me out. <clears throat> but yeah, he went by the name Chicago. So yeah, we uh, left off with doing this Rolling Stone. Um, top 50 genuinely horrible albums by brilliant artists. And um, we started off, or we left off on 50. So let's try to interact with this thing here and get down, make this fuck off Josh, Josh Stone. Let's move down to 50 or 30. 30 is where we left off. And like I said, I haven't heard a lot of these records. Um, some I have heard, thanks to Todd in the Shadows. But um, a lot of them I have not. So I, I may not have much personal commentary, but I can, I can freak it out and I can be aghast at um, the choices nonetheless. Let me just... Okay, it's just white now. Okay, Jesus Christ, dude. All right, we're getting closer to where we left off. God, I was so hungry last time. This uh, Looking at this is just reminding me about how hungry I was last time I uh, was nearing this number. Okay. Paul McCartney, give my regret, regards to Broad Street. Now, already from looking at this here... Um, this is this album cover is pretty bad. That's a uh, huh. It's like the Paul McCartney. That's some good font, but then this looks like some cheesy kid that came out of a kid's like book 
in the 80s which and why is he like got his finger up to his mouth like that like he's about to stick it in his mouth his his middle-aged former beetle mouth it's hairy maybe that's robin williams arm going into about to touch palm because that does look like the arm hair, hair pattern of uh robin williams anyway this album came out in 1984 paul mccartney kind of can could do no wrong after the beatles he did the band wings and they were really well liked and highly regarded um i don't know let's see what uh, old rolling stone has to say about uh, this mccartney flop apparently in 78 the bgs and peter frampton learned the hard way with their film version of sergeant pepper's only hearts club band that a beatles theme movie packed with uh, recorded Fab Four classics is a very, very bad idea. But just six years later, Paul McCartney thought it w it could work if an actual Beatle did the singing and acting. He was incorrect. In Give My Regards to Broad Street, McCartney plays a bizarro land version of himself trying to track down stolen master tapes for an album. Every once in a while, he gets together with his old pal Ringo or has a very, very boring dream that never seems to end. Wow, this sounds really bad, something I might be interested in watching. Um, the soundtrack features redone versions of Yesterday, Good Day Sunshine, Here, There, and Everywhere, and other Beatles tunes. Uh, the problem is nobody was asking for such a thing. You can't improve on the originals, especially with 1984 production methods. The whole thing is just a woefully misguided mess that has no earthly reason to exist. Wow, that, that kind of actually sounds like an interesting listen. Um, to hear like one of the more renowned Beatles uh, cover their own songs like about 15 years later and have them be like considered shit well not even 15 years later more like i don't know it's like eight or nine years later okay whatever Joni mitchell what wasn't she like number three on the greatest albums of all time with her album blue dog eat dog look at that album cover gee whiz Gee whiz. Those are some fucking like trippy psychedelic looking dogs. God. Well, let me see. Hey, 85. Dude, all these like all these people from like the 60s and 70s who like w any of them who tried to transition into the 80s, they all have a flop fucking period. They have like a flop arc. And Joni Mitchell is no different. So I guess in the 80s she tried her hand at Oh, no. Let's see what old Rolling Stone has to say. Joni Mitchell assembled an impressive lineup of collaborators for her 85 LP Dog Eat Dog, including Thomas Dolby. She blinded me with science. Michael McDonald. I'm gonna be there. Don Henley. Uh, I can see you. Brown skin shining in the sun. Wayne Shorter. No idea who that is. Steve Lukather. He's from um, Toto. And James Taylor. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. But their collective efforts add up to a generic synth pop LP that does little to distinguish itself. Mitchell takes aim at Ronald Reagan, televangelist, and corporate greed. Damn, bro. Really uh, getting uh, specific with those complaints that any other uh, democratic leaning person would probably take aim at. But the songs are married by antiseptic 80s production and her baffling decision to not play any guitar. Quote, it's disappointing after three years silence, her social criticisms are merely the short, bloodless, liberal hom homilies you would expect from Rush. Oh, damn. How are you going to throw shade at Rush like that? Neil wrote way smarter lyrics about that kind of stuff than, I mean, I haven't heard the Joni Mitchell shit, but can't be that good. Um, how are you going to throw shade at Rush like that? Who fucking wrote that shit? Rob Tenenbaum? Uh, no Christmas tree for you this year, Tenenbaum. Tr Christmas, uh, anyway, Tenenbaum is Christmas tree in German. Uh, if Joni wants to reach beyond the, the faithful who will buy this LP to keep their collection complete, why is Dog Eat Dog such an unpleasant listen? Now, I, I really want to listen to that album now. A fucking synth pop Joni Mitchell record in the 80s? Damn. Um, Yeah, on original, I'm just like, whoa, what's up with throwing Rush under the bus all of a sudden? I'm trying to perfect the perfect Italian, whoa, or oh. I'm like, the they do on the, the Sopranos. I'm working on, on perfecting it, so hopefully 
being a quarter Italian, hopefully I can get that 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 down, you know, because there are definitely some, oh, you know, type situations like throwing out the rush thing. There was no reason to do that. Almond Brothers Band, Brothers of the Road. Well, that, dude, this is literally like this could have been a picture taken from the church I went to in like the 90s when I was a kid. Like this, that this that just looks like a dude, bunch of dudes from the, the small little Southern Baptist church I went to. Like this does not look like a fucking band. Look at this. Look at the guy in the stri uh the I know you can't see my where my mouse is pointing. The guy on the far right with like the purple and blue striped shirt. Jesus, H Christ. And then you got army surplus guy on the far left. Like Anyway, good lord. Those guys look like a bunch of losers. <laughs> um so Almond Brothers, you know, they had like what? They put out like two two or three good albums at least. Um, I don't know if I feel like reading this one. I guess I will. The 10 years between their 71 classic at Fillmore East and Brothers of the Road um, must have felt like an eternity to the Allman Brothers due to their back-to-back -back deaths of guitarist Dwayne Allman and bassist Barry Oakley. And the breakup and reunion of the band that followed, they were still in delicate shape by 1981, down a key member thanks to the defection of drummer, however you say that, name Jamoy and yet somehow Clive Davis thought they were in a position to pump out hits for Arista that explains the glossy sheen of Brothers of the Road in the absence of their signature twin guitar attack um okay whatever I'm gonna keep this list moving on here oh yeah Todd in the Shadows did a, a an album uh, a video about this album Crown Royal run DMC basically um Run wanted to do it, which I believe is the guy on the far left. Run wanted to do the record. Daryl did not, the guy in the middle, Daryl did not want to do this record. He want and, and if he did want to do it, he wanted to stick to like that old school hip hop flow. But Run was wanting to, um, he was wanting to make like a new hip hop album for like the 21st century. So they ended up they ended up like not really being able to agree on the direction and um it ended up just not sounding good. They had all kinds of weird features on there. Like they had Fred Durst, they had Steven Jenkins from Third Eye Blind singing on one of the tracks. Um it was just kind of like a garbled mess. Yeah, again and again Todd in the Shadows did a video on it. Um I suck Todd's dick a lot lately, but honestly like the direction that I'm kind of going in with my channel is is similar to his Train Records series that he did or does and uh, I fucking love that series. That's like the main thing I watch his channel for and One Hit Wonderland, but um Yeah, he covers he covers the al album flops. Now, I think the big difference between Todd in the Shadows and me is that he is doing albums that flopped by an otherwise successful band like um like this Madonna record here American Life. So like Madonna is like one of the biggest pop stars success wise, you know, ever. Um but she had this like one album that was like really bad. So that's kind of what Todd in the Shadows does is uh records that seemingly ended the artist's kind of career after they did the album um my thing that i haven't even named yet it's just videos i've been doing that because i find it interesting not necessarily because of todd in the shadows but um it was i guess it was a, a mild inspiration um the thing that i do I, I look for more weird shit like not necessarily an artist that had any success in the music industry but just like a weird thing they did um like especially if it's some weird genre pivot or something like that that's kind of how i feel i differ and i'm not uh ripping off todd in the shadows you know his uh his channel abbreviation is tits i wonder if he's ever thought about that hey guys let's watch some tits um the only thing douchier than smoking my vape on live stream is cleaning my vape on live stream. Let's read some of these comments. I see them popping up down here and I haven't like really read any of them. 
I realize I could be making so much more money by uh, just reading super chats, but I'm a man of the people, damn it. And I, I want to read what you guys have to say. Um, but if you did want to throw in a super chat here and there, I would appreciate it. And if you want to hit the like button uh, or like like this stream or whatever, so it'll, uh, I guess, show it to more people. Uh, all right. <laughs> Dead Beat Boy. REO Speedwagon sucks. They haven't been mentioned yet, but um, I like two of their songs. But yeah, in general, I would say REO Speedwagon does suck. Um, I am very, I am not very familiar with all of McCartney, so I'm not familiar with any of it. Um, I only know Wings, and I only know like Band on the Run. But I've been told that Wings is like a really solid band or whatever from back in the day. Like it was a solid transition after the Beatles. Um, Give my regards to Broad Street McCartney's Nadir, one of uh, the worst films ever made. However, No More Lonely Nights is a great song. Great uh, guitar solo by one David Gilmore. Oh, nice. Um, you never talk about Stone Temple Pilots. Art for universe. Because um, I don't really don't have much to say about Stone Temple Pilots. They were a... Um, they were a solid... They're, they're a solid band. Alternative rock band. Um... I think they kind of took a little too much from the grunge movement and kind of, I don't know. It's like by the time Stone Temple Pilots came out, let's just say they had like a really good roadmap as to what was selling and they were able to kind of cash in on what the bands that had come before them had already established. Because I mean, what their first album core came out in 93, I want to say. By then, you already had two years of Nirvana and Pearl Jam, Stone, or uh, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, you know, to, to kind of glean from and, and see their success and be like, okay, whatever music genre we were gonna do in the past, let's fucking let's let's change it to uh, this this whole uh, grunge thing because it seems to be selling. But they were good at it though. I mean, at least that they were good at the co-opting of the thing if that's what they they might not they may not have even done that you know i'm just being a dick right now uh why is everyone talking about ario speedwagon they haven't even, they haven't even came up on here joni mitchell blah blah, blah. <laughs> you never talk about talk talk <laughs> all right now you're just trolling me which is fine <laughs> Joni Mitchell is a mediocre painter. Yeah, all the all these people who fucking uh all these artists, you know, who are musicians who like or like presidents' sons who start off doing one thing and then they decide that they're gonna like start painting like Paul Stanley from Kiss. Like I've never even seen any of his paintings, but um it's not surprising whenever they suck, because it's like Oh, well, I'm good at guitar and songwriting, so that must just immediately transfer into the art of painting. It's like, no, those are two totally different things, but, you know, whatever. Um, dude, you know Paul Stanley's fucking paintings have sold for... He's made, like, millions of dollars off of his paintings that he's sold. Like, not Kiss songs, just his fucking paintings alone. He's had art, gallery exhibits. I've never seen a single one of his goddamn paintings. I'm really curious to look it up but uh obs doesn't make uh changing websites the easiest in the world so it'd be a huge pain in the ass but maybe one day we can uh, check out paul stanley's paintings and make fun of them or they might actually be good i don't know <laughs> there's some great o's in goodfellas i think you can perfect it just by watching that movie it's harder than it than it looks Especially for British people, I would imagine. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Jesus Christ, a lot of comments tonight. I'm trying to sift through them before I keep going here. I like the weird pivot shift, like when Bowie made a Jungle album, like Jungle, like as an electronic music. That'd be, that'd be some wacky, wild stuff, man. Man, Chicago Transit Authority, you're a, you are definitely making up for lost time with the with these comments. Um. All right. Okay. Moving on. Why is everyone talking about Ario Speedwagon? Oh, Lars Ulrich is a fucking 
Painter 2? Oh, God. Oh, God. I would not, I do not want to see that. Yeah, so this Madonna American Life album, I'm sure a lot of you already know uh, the story as to why this one was so bad. Um, I mean, you've heard the singles off of there. Like, I'm an American dream. You know, that, with that little rap in there. I drink my, uh, was that, like, I drive a Bugatti, or I don't forget, what is it? She's like, I drink my Frappuccino. It says it's an Enzino, and, and I don't know. It, okay, fuck it. I'm going to look up the lyrics to that rap because it's really fucking bad. Madonna American Life lyrics. It's really fucking bad. That is the most white girl rap you have ever heard. It's like Madonna wasn't the innovator until you know a certain time and then it's like she couldn't just she couldn't just hang it up and be like you know i'm i'm not uh hip anymore so why don't i why why don't i not try to rap okay this is this is, this is the rap i'm drinking a soy latte i get a double shot it goes right through my body and you know i'm satisfied first of all it goes right through your body you're saying it gives you the shits madonna ew and you were like 50 when you were, I don't want to think about your 50 year old coffee shits. I drive my Mini Cooper and I'm feeling super duper. Oh, <laughs> oh, I drive my Mini Cooper and I'm feeling super duper. Oh God, white people. Why must you embarrass me like this? Yo, they tell me I'm a trooper and you know I'm satisfied. And she just used the, and you know I'm satisfied line again. That's so fuck. I do yoga and pilates, and the room is full of hates. So I'm checking out the bodies, and you know I'm satisfied. Okay, so I guess this is just a refrain. You know I'm satisfied. I'm digging on the isotopes. This metaphysic shit is dope, and all this can give you hope, You and you know I'm satisfied. I got a lawyer and a manager and an agent and a chef, three nannies, an assistant and a driver and a jet, a trainer and a butler and a bodyguard of five, a gardener and a stylist. Do you think I'm satisfied? I'd like to express my extreme point of view. I'm not a Christian and I'm not a Jew. I'm just living out the American dream. And I just realized that nothing is what it seems. Ugh, that, that was, that was the worst thing that I have ever heard. Um, yeah, yeah, it was bad. Okay. Anyway, so we agree that that album sucks. I, even though I do like Madonna, honestly, I like, uh, I like a lot of her, her eighties shit. Definitely her nineties stuff is when she, uh, peaked in my opinion neil young he's looking like a confused old man in this picture what's wrong neil did you lock yourself out again buddy 2009 wow that's that's a late release neil young record but i mean he's one of those old fucks that's going to be putting out albums until he dies all right let's see what they got to say about old neil here Neil Young has taken on many ambitious projects over the years, but none quite as grandiose as his attempt to ride, rid the world of the internal combustion engine by converting his 1959 Lincoln Continental into a fully electric vehicle, creating a model for car manufacturers all over the globe. It was difficult to get him to talk about anything else at the time, and he made an entire album about the effort with songs like Fuel Line, Off the Road, and Hit the Road that quickly start blurring together. The low point is cough up the bucks where he talks, where he takes on corporate greed. Quote, it's all about my car. He sings cough up the bucks, cough up the bucks. It's all about my car. Cough up the bucks, cough up the bucks. It's all about my car. Cough up the bucks, cough up the bucks. It's all about my, sorry. I actually kind of like that. Cough up the bucks, cough up the bucks. Oh, the, man, I just did the white person clap. We clap on the off fucking, damn it. And I just, I was a drummer too. I should know better. It's on the fucking two and fours, people. Um, so when he played it during a nor notoriously long Mass and Square gar Garden concert in 2008, featuring eight songs from the album and one outtake, a handful of people literally fell asleep. Wow. That's too many new songs from your new, especially an artist of that caliber. Um, yeah, that's, that's too many new songs to play off your new record when you have so much classic material. But you should have done the cough up the bucks one though. That's got a good groove to it. Um, all right, moving on. Cough up the bucks, 
Shit, God damn it. Cough up the books. Cough that. Cough up. I am too. I'm, the whiteness is taking over. I'm coughing on all the. Oh God, this fucking Lil Wayne album. I remember. I think I was still in school when this album came out. Two thousand. No, I wasn't. I was just out of high school. Two thousand and ten. Yeah, Lil Wayne picked up a guitar and thought he could play fucking guitar. Again, just get, getting into another art form you know nothing about and looking like a jackass. I remember all my fucking white friends were so fucking jazzed about this shit. They're like, bro, Lil Wayne's playing guitar. It's like everything we could ever want. And I'm like, he, su he fucking sucks. He's not a good, he's not, he's like fucking Rex Viper level guitarist. Like, he's not good. Like, just because you want to play guitar, that doesn't mean you can magically play guitar. So I'm reading some of the comments here. Matt Henderson, that car burned to the ground. Um, Neil Young isn't that great of an artist or person, in my opinion. I think he's a good artist. I'm, I'm suspect about what kind of person he is. I, I certainly didn't like that whole move that um, basically Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young did when um, Joe Rogan moved to Spotify and like all these old fogies. Like, I think Joni Mitchell was one of them. They took their music off of Spotify because Joe Rogan was on there. Meanwhile, John Lennon has a song called uh, Woman is the N-Word of the World, Hard R. Um, but they were fine with all of that. Uh, but as soon as Joe Rogan, who, you know, has some controversial opinions, I guess. Like, he gets on there and they're, like, taking their music off. That was so fucking... That was so lame. That was so fucking anyway um <laughs> my parents used to listen to neil young's harvest moon album for years i can't stand his voice yeah he's got a real you either like that voice or you don't I, I think it's okay um i like uh i like neil young's album mirrorball it was more of a grunge album that he did in the 80s with the members of pearl jam and i like his album trans which is like an electro pop synth pop album that doesn't sound anything like neil young um, but yeah, anyway, okay, Lil Wayne is a hip hop genius, but he learned the hard way with 2010's rebirth that his skills did not transfer over to the world of rock and roll. That's what I'm saying. You, just cause you're good at, I'm a good musician. You should see, you should see me try to draw something. I suck quite bad. Uh, you should see me, I don't know, I'm actually a pretty decent videographer and photographer, but I mean, shit, I don't know, someone who's a good, like, uh, I don't know, I shouldn't say it, like, it, it, it I, photography's one of those skills where, like, you can accidentally take a great photo, right, like, you can not be a photographer, but accidentally just right place, right time, right lighting, you somehow took a fantastic picture. I don't think there's any other art form where you can where you where you can have no skill whatsoever and accidentally do something great. Anyway, I'm getting off the topic. Uh, Lil Wayne, he was coming off a long winning streak with three uh, consecutive uh, the Carter albums and had all been over top 40 radio with hits like Lollipop and Got Money. I God, I hate have to hear these songs every week at karaoke. Lil Wayne is the most pop like. He's probably, like, I don't know if he's the greatest rapper of all time, but he's the most popular rapper of all time, aside from, like, maybe Drake, who apparently a video leaked of him jerking on his dick. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but I, I was shown last night at a bar on someone's phone because they're talking about uh, some, some guy doing the helicopter with his cock, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And then she pulls up this video, of this dude pulling on his uh his long meat sausage, and I'm like, "What is this? A video some guy sent you off a of Tinder or something?" She's like, "No, that's Drake." And I'm like, "What? Seriously?" I didn't ask her to play the video again so I could look at the face, but I just took her word for it. Apparently, it was something that leaked on out on the internet or something. So yeah, Drake's cocks out there online now. Apparently, oh. um. So he tries to play guitar. He splutters and wails over tracks stuffed with aggro stomp and bland riffage. 
It sounds like he's been holing up with a bunch of Spy Mob and Incubus records. Wayne growls like an auto-tuned Kid Rock on swaggering American Star. But the hyper-clever Wayne we know is missing in action. Yeah, 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 yeah. He plays guitar and he sucks. Wait, hold on. Wait. He stretches his croak past the breaking point on I'll Die For You like some 21st century of trans era Neil Young. Huh, I just brought that album up. I like that. Trans is a good album, dude. I don't care what anyone says. Go listen to it. I mean, it's like a, it's like legitimately like a kind of like a craft work album. All right. Anybody saying anything that I can read? Uh, Pineapple Mood. I love how they never include Ted Nugent on these lists. Oh, God. What was it? He had this one cringy. They played this live clip of a Ted Nugent song on Sirius XM one time. Oh, yeah. He's like. Because, you know, he's always got to be the crazy guy. Especially when he was young, he was crazy. And he gets on the mic, he's like, What's up, everybody? You ready to do the wango tango? And I was just like, Ugh. You were the fucking, you were the, like, the little elfish nymph of cringe. I don't know if he's tall or short or whatever, but he's, he's, he's very just very cringy. Wango tango. Oh, no, what? He, doesn't he have another song called Wang, Wham, ba Wang Bang Sweet Poon Tang? He, it's just dad vibes, dude. And it's weird to see because he was young during that concert thing. It's like dad vibes didn't come from like actual dads. It was like that generation of people thought that shit was genuinely like witty and funny. I mean, you know senses of humor evolve and all that shit but i mean back then you know ted nugent could have gone on stage and said are you ready to have some wang dang sweet poon tang and my dad would probably laugh his ass off be like that's funny yeah my dad had a southern accent don't i uh, don't know how i didn't end up with it but i'm glad i didn't because i think southern accents kind of make you sound a little dumb oh that's a hot take that's a hot take but it's all right Cause I'm my dad. Uh, my dad was not dumb. He just, there was a lot of shit. He knew more. I mean, he, I don't know shit about cars. He knew all about cars, but that man could not get on the internet to save his fucking life. I had to show him every single fucking time how to work the internet. And it was so annoying. And he had to show me every single fucking time how to do very basic things to my car. So different errors. Cheap trick, the doctor, 1986. I don't, do I care why this is bad? I don't really care. I'm skipping this one, guys, because I don't really care. I, I'm, I'm not big on Cheap Trick. I, I think that the, their best song is like Woke Up With A Monster. It's probably my favorite song by them. And that one came out in the 90s. What the fuck is this? The Doors Full Circle, 1972, okay? I'm guessing this is a post-Jim Morrison Doors album where they tried to cobble up the pieces of leftover Doors material. The Doors were still young men when Jim Morrison died in Paris in 1971. Damn, he died fucking early. I thought The Doors at least made it into the 70s. Like, geez, I didn't know he died like that early in, in the span of time. They were also uh, deep into a collection of songs they hoped to record with him when he got back to the States. So they finished what they had as a trio and released it as a new Doors album, Other Voices, with Ray Manzarak and Robbie Krieger sharing lead vocal duties. Oh, that's a that's a tough sell, man. Yeah, no Jim Morrison on a Doors record. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, they probably should have called it quits once it became clear the public had no interest in a Morrison free Doors. Yeah, right. But they managed to record one more album, 72's Full Circle. It's an odd mix of uh, it's an odd mix or R and B. It, oh, sh look at that. Rolling Stone made a fuck up. Or is that supposed to be of? How are you going to make a typo, Rolling Stone? Like, come on. Sta standards. If you're making typos, then, you know, why can't an eighth grade, an eighth grader uh, turning in his fucking research paper make some time? Josh, just get on with the fucking list. All right, fair enough. 
Uh, yeah, so it's a blend of R&B, jazz, psychedelia, and rock that never congeals into anything original. There's also a baffling cover of Good Rockin' Tonight that they renamed Good Rockin'. Okay. None of it works. The group made the logical decision to disband shortly after Full Circle came out, and they kept it out of print for several decades. Few fans complained. Damn. Damn. Hot damn. All right, let's see what some of these comments are saying here. Let's pick them out. I remember guitar virtuoso Lil Wayne. <laughs> Do you? Do you remember him? I don't. I remember uh, shoddy, shitty guitarist Lil Wayne, but that's just me. Chicago Transit Authority, I'm glad you agree with whatever I, it was that I said. Autism Speaks is a terrible charity. Uh, I've, I've heard that. Didn't Blair from the Illuminati talk about that? <gasps> It was not naughty that I brought Blair from the Illuminati. If you don't know who Blair from the Illuminati is, Illuminati is a channel that does like video essays. And um, she got caught plagiarizing. On top of that, there's a bunch of other boring drama that I don't feel like getting into with her. Uh, I love how they know. Gosh, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, gee, gee. Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang. Ugh, yeah, that's that's the name of it then. Okay. So bad. So fucking bad. Uh, my cousin told me a weird thing about Ted Ted Nugent one time, and my cousin's not really into music like that. So Ted Nugent has that song "Stranglehold," which is probably the only halfway decent uh, Ted Nugent song, mainly because Ted Nugent isn't singing vocals on there; he's only playing guitar. And my cousin's like, he's he's like, yeah, dude. Every time I'm in the shower, I think about the song "Stranglehold," but I changed the lyrics to "I got my dick in a stranglehold," and it's like. You don't normally make jokes like this. I like this ver this this Steven. Um, anyway, that's an aside. <laughs> John Lennon really cared about the plight of women. That's why he beat up Yoko. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything to substantiate that, but that was just a funny comment. Um, the Chester Show. You sit in a very strange way. I can't judge, though. I sit the same way. Well, then why are you calling it strange? You should have said I sit in a normal way, and everyone else sits. My body, over time, as I sit, it gets more and more horizontal. Like, I'm lying in a bed because, like, gravity pushes me down. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm lazy. Reading, reading, reading. Yeah, he's a part of the 27 Club. I'm aware. Yeah, I see typos. I have this Newsweek, or not Newsweek, it's just called The Week, and it's like a news magazine. I see typos in there a lot. It's crazy, man. And with now with the fucking chat GPT, like, I see articles like a lot now online, and it said this part, this art, part of this article was written using uh, AI. I'm like, well, what's that mean? Like, how did they use AI to write the article? What did it contribute? It's fucking, we're living in weird times with that AI shit. Where's the autism gang at? And everyone's pointing at themselves. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this shit's funny. Patrick Reeves, we need a new dance when we go soon. I know, man. Um, Found Dance with Ghost Channel when he said one hot minute was bad in the comments. I don't know if I ever said it was bad. I uh, it just wasn't that good. the The album as a whole, it it lacked like a direction. I feel like, um, yeah, we're working on a new Dancing with Ghost song. Like, currently we had one that we were go about to go into the studio with, but um. We, we at the last minute kind of realized that neither one of us really loved the song all that much and I was personally was struggling to find a good melody to lay over the top but the music was re recorded we just needed like basically art to our vocals tracked and I don't know I couldn't find a good melody for the verse and so uh, now it's so we shelved that wrote something completely new and now it sounds like super fucking like m prog metal it's like sounds like a tool song or something new song we're working on now 
Carol King, speeding time. Guys, I'm not going to lie. I don't give a shit. So she did Tapestry back in the early 70s. Now she's trying to do an early 80s album. And um, yeah, I it, he, look, I'll save... I'll save you all the time of uh, in trouble of hearing me attempt to read. If they're an artist that were big in the 60s or 70s and they released an album in the 80s, it's probably going to suck because they're probably going to be experimenting with drum machines but not doing it well. They're probably going to be experimenting with synthesizers and not doing it well. Um, you know, leave that shit to guys who came up in the 80s like Depeche Mode, um, like... I don't know, fucking... Why is Howard Jones the only other example that comes to mind? That's That guy's not even good. Uh, Tears for Fears, another good synth pop, soft sell. Those dudes knew how to utilize all the 80s shit and make it sound like right and current and good. Hearing all these 60s and 70s people come into the 80s and try to use a drum machine, it just never... I mean, D.D. King, man, like what the fuck? Fa 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 funky. I'm D.D. King and I am the best. You know, ever since I made that fucking D.D. King Ramones does rap video, I've had a quite a few people fucking defending that piece of shit album. It's so funny how people just want to be contrarian so goddamn bad. Like, I do these videos where I'm clearly pointing out how the album clearly fucking sucks. And you'll, you still have these people be like, no, nah, man, you're fucking stupid. That Vanilla Ice album was awesome, man. Or like, uh, I fucking actually really love that D.D. King record, man. Don't diss a Ramon, motherfucker. I actually like Chris Gaines a lot. And it's like, dude, no, stop trying to be edgy. Stop, stop trying to be a contrarian. You're not cool. Like, you're not, you're not edgy. Like, it just sucks, okay? I'm sorry. It sucks. And you don't like it. And you're just trying to be different right now. I'm sorry your parents didn't love you lo or loved you less or didn't love you more. Okay, Queen and Paul Rogers, The Cosmos Rocks. Ooh, yeah, this this does not. I also love how not only did they lose Freddie Mercury, but um, the bass player. The fuck is his name? It's escaping me at the moment. You had Roger Taylor on drums. You had Brian Man guitar. You had, what's his name? Somebody tell me in the comments. <laughs> anyway, bass player from Queen, he, John Deacon. Thank you, Starving Otis. Um, he just, like, after Freddie Mercury died, he just, like, stepped the fuck out of the public eye. Like, he, he did not he did not give a fuck. He did not want to be in the public eye anymore. And it sucks because, like, they could have had three quarters of the band remaining, but he was just like, all right, guys, I played da 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 and I wrote, you're my best friend. That's my contribution. I'm out. Um, so, yeah, in this picture here, we have Brian May, Roger Taylor, and um, Paul Rogers from Bad Company. Now, out of any voice, before I even read this fucking thing, oh, they had a lot to say about this one. Out of, out of any voice you could have chose to replace a, a voice that just cuts through it's so, like, Freddie Mercury's voice was crystal clear. I mean, that fucking thing, it, it was, it sat high. Um, I'm pretty sure he was tenor. Never, I mean, I, any Queen song I've tried to do, uh, I've done Don't Stop Me Now. That one was not so bad. Um, never been foolish enough to even try Bohemian Rhapsody, although that doesn't stop people every week at my karaoke gigs. Um... But yeah, his voice sits up higher. Why would you pick like a more grisly, raspier Paul, like voice like Paul Rogers? Now, he sounded great in Bad Company, and he's got a great soulful voice, but he, no, not Queen. No, that does not fit Queen at all. I could see uh, Paul Rogers like sitting in for like the Allman Brothers or like a Southern rock band or something. Not, not a band like as theatrical as Queen. Like, I, I could see getting, like, Steve Perry from Journey singing in Queen or something. Although, by that time, his range had probably gone to shit. 
Okay, the decision to bring Paul Rogers into Queen made a certain amount of sense back in 2005. Guitarist Brian May and drummer Roger Taylor were in desperate need of a singer, and Rogers was without a band since Bad Company were on hiatus. Joining forces was a chance to assemble a, a supersized stadium show that mixed Queen classics with Rogers standards like All Right Now and Feel Like Making Love. Oh, I didn't know they played Bad Company songs. That'd be fucking weird. You're at like a Queen concert. They got the big banner and all that. And you hear, and you just hear, I feel like making love. Feel like making love to you. That'd be fucking weird. And it'd also be weird to hear Paul Rogers be like, Tonight, I'm gonna have myself a real good time. I feel alive. Yeah, yeah, it'd just be weird. I know Paul Rogers doesn't sound anything like that, but that's my approximation. So do with it. What you what you will. Um, so he was uh, he was his own man. Taylor said blah, 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 blah. he belonged in the blues soul field uh, at which there were no better. Our stuff is a little too eclectic, probably. That's a polite way of saying that he couldn't convincingly sing Bohemian Rhapsody without the whole thing just seeming ridiculous. Exactly. So why did they do it? But they hadn't quite come to that conclusion in 2008 when Queen and Paul Rogers entered the studio to cut the Cosmos Rocks. That sounds like a laser light show. That doesn't sound like the name of a fucking album. That sounds like a planetarium uh, exhibit that you would see at your local Museum of Science and History. That does not sound like the name of a record um, unless Ace Freely released it. Under Rogers' command, Cosmos Rocks evokes an unmemorable stretch of drive-time radio with slow songs like Say It's Not True, Recalling Air Supply, wrote Rolling Stones. The classic rock cliches aren't all Rogers' fault. Original band members helped write tracks like Still Burnin', a generic bar band jam laced with lyrical chestnuts like Music Makes the World Go Round. The group parted ways with Rogers soon after the Cosmos Rocks. They fared better with Adam Lambert. Yeah, see? There you go, Adam Lambert. Um, but they've yet to record any new music. Maybe they've learned their lesson with the Cosmos Rocks. That was such a stupid idea on Queen's part. Why would you, why would you do that? Why would you do that? George Michael would have been great for Queen, I agree. But that dude died like way like too early. He had them heart problems. Uh, I've not seen the Bohemian Rhapsody movie, so I don't know about it. I tried to watch Rocket Man, but it was like a fucking musical. I'm sitting there watching it. I'm like, all right, going to get a little bit of Elton John lore, the way he wants it to be told, whatever. Within like 10 minutes of the movie, they're busting into songs, like musical style. And I'm like, I get the guy's gay, but come on, man, like... Give me like a real movie here. So I turned it off after like 15 minutes. I couldn't watch it. I hate musicals. I absolutely fucking hate musicals. That's the only way that I know that I'm not gay. No, I'm just joking. Uh, I'm like 10% I'm like gay. The things I want to love about things You guys are just having your own ass little conversations in here. You don't even need me. Is this why I need to start a Discord so you guys can just talk amongst yourselves? <clears throat> I never wanted to hear the guy who sang All Right Now and Feel Like Making Love sing uh, Killer Queen. Exactly. I, I didn't want to hear that either. It's like, that's not going to sound good. It's just not. Um, dude, Hot Space fucking sucks. <laughs> Uh, maybe I need to re listen to it again. I haven't listened to it in a long time, but that that's that. Oh, you know, I could do a, a queen tier list one of these days. I, there's a lot of queen that I have not listened to. That's going to be a, a big fucking undertaking because I've only heard like three or three or four of their albums and they've got like, I feel like they've got like 12. Body language was a choice. Uh, bump, ba -da -da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. Give me body. That's pretty much what that song sounds like. Um, okay, just reading through the fucking comments here. Trying to sound like Bill Clinton. 
Uh, my boyfriend and I listened to Bulls on Parade, and he didn't know that the guitar solo was a guitar solo. Oh yeah, uh, that solo is pretty easy to replicate. We, my old cover band, played um, Bulls on Parade, and I had to do the guitar part. Um, so what what Tom does is he like mutes it the strings with his right hand, and he scratches with his left hand on the strings. I muted with my left hand. I just used a guitar pick. I turned it on its side, and you know, like. It sounds similar to turntables, um, honestly. The scratching or whatever. That's one of his, like, I mean, all of his solos are inventive, but that's one of his, like, his technically least in inventive guitar solos. Um, dude, the fucking solo uh, on, what, Testify? He pulls the jack out of his guitar, and he has this, like, wham distorted whammy sound, and he presses it up against his hand, which makes this buzzing sound. But because the signal is being processed through all of his pedals, it makes this crazy, like, kind of screechy sound. And it's like, if you see video of Rage Against the Machine in concert, the shit Tom Morello does to make his guitar make those sounds, it's like, this. why is this guy not, like, memorialized in, in like, some kind of museum of rock as, like, the guy who took guitar playing and guitar solos to the next level a guy who literally thought outside of the box uh a guy who literally unplugged his fucking guitar to do a solo with it like this shit's insane dude he's like i i am in awe of tom morello um, um by the way i just finished watching your last worst album stream dwg us vids women watch yes i want to know please tell me I watch whatever that includes music essays like you and Crash Thompson, etc. I never heard of Crash Thompson. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I want more I want more ladies on this channel. I, it's like my viewership is like 95% male and that's um I want to I want to like I don't know, reach more people that don't have Anyway, you can't say that now. You can't say you can't say reach more people that don't have dicks because there's trans men out there who don't have dicks, and so you can't say that. So, I just I just fucked up. Oh, well, want to get back to the Rolling Stone thing. Um, moving on, we have 19 George Harrison Gone Tropo. Now I can tell you from that title alone, I already hate it. Look at this goofball, dressed up like fucking Yanni. If he was in the witness protection program, look at this hideous album, like this album cover, dude. Like, what the fuck? Um, jeez, gone tropo. What's tropo? Is that a cute way of saying tropical? Uh, I'm guessing this is George Harrison doing like a tropical, like island sounding record. Do I really want to read this? Not really. I want to finish this list tonight. Damn it. Lou Reed Mistrial. You, you mean to tell me that Metal Machine isn't going to be on this list? Because maybe they don't, maybe they don't consider um, Metal Machine an actual album, which I don't either. I don't know if you guys know about that album that Lou Reed did, but um, it, it's it's literally like what forty five minutes of. Uh, in like machinery sound, like screeching, inaudible, like they use, to uh, they've used in the past Metallica as like sound torture. If like a terrorist is held up in a bunker or something, they'll like blast loud music so they can't sleep or whatever. My bid is, why would you not use metal music by Lou Reed? It's literally, it's inaudible. You will turn it off after 30 seconds. The guy's a fucking idiot to even have released that. Like, why would you have done that? Go listen to that album whenever you get a chance. Not right now because you're watching me, and I need the attention. I need the validation badly. Um, that that it, it, it was literally just six tracks that are like 10 minutes or 15 minutes each of just loud screeching sounds. Guy's a fucking moron. White hot, white light, hot heat, more like fucking inaudible ear cancer. It's not easy to pick uh, Lou Reed's single worst album, considering this is the man who gave us metal machine music, 
Sally Can't Dance, and Lulu. Okay, Rolling Stone, they, they know what's up. But we ultimately went with 86's Mystery, mi oh, Mistrial. I'm saying Mystery, what a fucking idiot. Mistrial. The colossal misfire came after a streak of strong albums in the early 80s and failed to generate anything resembling a hit. Reed had tried to go for one more commercial sound in his previous album, 84's New Sensations, and it had worked pretty well. Mistrial also had a modern sound. This time out, though, the songs he had uh, just plain sucked. Making matters worse, he thought the world was ready to hear him rap on the original rapper, but spelled with a W-R-A. Oh, my God. He raps. Dude, I'm telling you, this list is like manna from heaven. I'm going to cover a bunch of these albums. I'm telling you. White, okay, I guess this is part of his rap. White against white, black against Jew. It seems like it's 1942. The baby sits in front of MTV watching violent fantasies while dad guzzles beer with his favorite sport. That doesn't rhyme, Lou Reed. Shouldn't have made Metal Machine music. Um, elsewhere on the record, he comes out swinging against violence, violent movies. and I can't read tonight, apparently. And ends up sounding like a member of the conservative PR, PMRC or whatever. That's the Parents Musical Rights Against Censorship. No, it's, it's for censorship. PMRC is why we have parental advisory explicit warning on all of our album covers today. It's because the PMRC in the 80s, a lot of the hair metal or the 80s hard rock or whatever you want to fucking call it. They had violent themes and yada, yada, yada. And Tipper Gore, Al Gore's wife made it her fucking crusade which sounds like a total suburban mom thing to do she made it her crusade to uh get some kind of labeling on the records to let parents know that there's explicit content on the record and all it did was help the record sell better because when kids saw that it had the warning label on it they wanted to buy it more um so it kind of backfired stupid politician dumbasses um Anyway, uh, so yeah, Lou Reed is uh, out of touch here. I guess he bounced back in 1989 with New York, but uh, Miss Trial was one of the most forgotten albums in his notoriously uneven catalog. Wow. What do you guys think about all that? Uh, streaming making me thirsty. Lou Reed is a music troll. God, ain't that the truth. Um... Imagine saying that St. Anger is worse than Lulu. I don't know. I, I need to listen to Lulu. I haven't really checked it out. Um, sorry, just reading your comments here. Metal Machine music is like a shit post troll record. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a giant shit post. It really is. Like It's so funny. Uh, so I also watch Nostalgia Critic sometimes, Cinema Soft sometimes, Mike the Snare, and a lot of video games. I like some of Mike the Snare's stuff. Um, obviously, I don't watch Nostalgia Critic anymore. Unless he's doing a movie that I really know a lot about. Um, I just lost my, uh, I lost my bonner for Doug Walker years ago. Love these Rolling Stone list videos. Thank you. Baba Booey. It's Baba Booey, everybody. Uh, if you think Lou Reed's metal machine music is bad, try our Mers Mersbo. What is that? Are you saying that's worse than metal machine music? I don't think it gets worse than that, honestly. Okay, so Transit Authority also knows about this Mersbo. Gosh, man, Josh always coming in with the fresh ideas. I said it once. I'll say it again. I'm glad glad you're not trying to make a YouTube channel because you'd be my competition having all the fucking fresh ideas. Give them to me instead. I, I'm the, the Josh that will do something with these ideas. Don't let them just percolate in your brain. Give them to me, man. I'm a very mainstream fucker. I don't know about a lot of underground stuff. Um, Let's see. What else do we got? Still a better rapper than Drake, who apparently... Played with his cock and put the video online somehow. He had a big dick, I will say. But I mean, uh, I guess I can't say that either. P yeah, PMRC found by Al Gore's wife. Typical! Um, Iggy Pop Forever, Lou Reed Never. Or, I mean, even David Bowie at that, for that rate, because I know they were like buddies at one point. Um, 
I like Bowie a lot more than Lou Reed. Dude, Lou Reed covered uh, Salisbury Hill by Peter Gabriel. Because Peter Gabriel was doing the scratch, You Scratch My Back, I'll Scratch Your albums. Where he did like those orchestra renditions of um, songs that he liked. He even did um, Street Spirit by Radiohead. And the dealio was he would cover a song by a band that he liked. And the list spanned all over with Peter Gabriel. It went from Regina Spector to, um, I want to say, um, anyway, it was like Reg Regina Spector, Arcade Fire, Radiohead. He had some uh, uh, fucking, uh, the dude who did the fucking Toy Story song, whatever, that guy. Um, but anyway, these guys, uh, Talking Heads, he covered a Talking Heads song. These guys were supposed to cover a Peter Gabriel song and he would compile them all and release it on an album called And I'll Scratch Yours. So the first one was Scratch My Back and then I'll Scratch Yours. And so I forget what Lou Reed's song he did for his first record, but Lou Reed picked Salisbury Hill to cover. And Lou Reed fucking destroyed that song. A... It sounds like it could be an original song because there's nothing about Salisbury Hill, the original, that makes it into the cover. He's not doing the same vocal melody. There's no dun, 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 climbing up on Salisbury Hill. None of that. It's just climbing up Salisbury Hill. Fuck you. I can see the city lights. It's so fucking bad. Like, what is your problem, dude? Like, yeah, I bet that guy was fucking insufferable to be around when he was younger, even. Yeah, Randy Newman. That's it. Randy Newman. Um, yeah, I know. It's a shame. Lou Reed and Peter Gabriel in the same sentence. It was, it was so fucking bad. Okay, let's move on here. What? David Bo... Wow, that... First of all, let's take a look at that fucking album cover. That looks like they ripped off uh, Fables of the Reconstruction by R.E.M. David Bowie got a, took a lot of leeway from R.E.M.'s Fables of the Reconstruction from this album cover. That is like the art style is exactly the same. The picture composition is different, but the art style is exactly the same. Yeah, and it came out in 87, which was a few years after R.E.M.'s record came out. It's not a surprise to me that R.E.M. would influence some of the older bands because their their sound was so new and, um, well, it's not like this. Jangle Pop was not so new. Like it's not like R.E.M. invented Jangle Pop, but the melodies were better. The songs were better constructed. Fight me, bro. Like, and anytime I talk, I, I talk about R.E.M. around the old timers. They always want to say, well, man, you need to listen to Smithereens, bro, or you need to listen to Stone Roses. It's like, no, I, I have. I've listened to all those bands. They suck. They're not. They're no good. Like, Smithereens has one good song, um, in my opinion. Uh, R.E.M., they're, everybody knows about them because they were the best of the best of that group. Like, they had the best songs, best melodies. It's just factual. Michael Stipe's a fantastic lyricist. Even though his, his lyrics make no goddamn sense, uh, they just sound really good. They sing well. Um, they make you think. Uh, you know, just come at me. Fight me. Is that a Pee Wee Herman album? <laughs> Looks like his playhouse. That's the perfect way of describing it. Um, I love how everyone says that everything Bowie did was perfect. I'm like, just uh, you are all, you are just adorable. Yeah, right? Um, let me see here. When I think of Jingle Pop, mostly think of the Smiths. Yeah, the Smiths and REM. Um, as far as Jingle Pop goes, they were like the two, the two big big ones out of the uh out of that time. Definitely, I'll take REM over the Smiths any day of the week, though. Um, Morrissey is uh his vocals kind of get on my nerves after a while. Um, I think Michael Stipe's voice is amazing. I think he's got like a very, it's so unique. I wish I could sing like michael stipe that'd be cool um or billy corgan if i could choose a voice to sing like out of any voice that you could choose why you would choose billy corgan just shows you how insane that i am but i think it, i thought he had a really cool fucking sounding voice i still do not anymore his voice is 
aged out into this re really weird nasally thing that kind of like sucks. That, that doesn't sound very good these days. But when Billy Corgan was like, you know, 1990 to 2000 Billy, like I loved that sound of his. His voice just sounded so like cool to me. It's like it was so different. Like, I don't know. Listen to me like busting a nut over here about Billy Corgan's voice. Let me let me fucking get on with this already. David Bowie hit a major creative cold streak in the immediate aftermath of his 1983 smash. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Let's swing. Swing to the... I hate that fucking song and everybody fucking loves it. And it's just so fucking lame. Ba, ba, ba. It's so 80s shit tastic. I just lame, lame, lame. Um anyway. Let's dance. Uh spewing out subpar albums like Tonight and the the two tin machine releases that left his even his most hardcore fans extremely underwhelmed. But the clear low point was 87's Never Let Me Down, which is a great Depeche Mode song that he took the name for. Uh, from my Nadir was never let me down. What the fuck does N Nadir mean? I feel like I know like what most. Uh, I feel like I have a pretty good vocabulary, but I. This is the second time I've read this word tonight. One time it was used in the chat, and now I'm seeing it again. My Nadir was never let me down. He said in '95, it was such an awful album. I really should. <laughs> Damn, he's saying it about his own album. He, that's some self awareness right there. I really shouldn't have even bothered going into the studio to record it. In fact, when I play it, I wonder if I did it sometimes. Damn. I've never heard an artist like talk that much shit about their own record. This record is a showcase of horrid 80s production choices. Bowie never played a single Never Let Me Down song in concert after the initial tour for it. And he completely reworked um, Time Will Crawl with live drums and modern instrumentation when he reassembled the 2008 compilation I Select. Oh, he wrote in the liner notes. To redo the rest of that album. Uh, two years after he died, producer Mario McNulty did exactly that for a box of Bowie's 80s work. Well, that's interesting. If you're a big Bowie's fan, if you're a big Bowie fan, uh, I figure you might be chomping at the bit to uh, get your hands on that. Now, I might have to check out that album. I mean, as he even Bowie himself's talking shit about, about his own record. You never hear that. Usually people stand by their pile of crap. Not, not old Bowie. I am not I am not stoked about this tour, okay? So I wish you would stop showing it to me, Rolling Stone. I do not want to see Fall Out Boy uh, live with uh, Hot Mulligan, which I think is um, one of the worst names for a band ever. The main... Uh, I would... The Jimmy Eat World would be the only uh, redeeming thing about this tour advertisement, but I wish they'd stop showing it to me because I'm not going... I fucking hate Fall Out Boy, and I hate how popular they still are with all the fucking nostalgic hungry millennials oh this just looks bad look at that fucking font look at that font can't even read the the name of the record chesapeake street incident chestnut street incident yeah that sounds pretty terrible a john mellencamp album in 76 yeah so now we got a case of an artist releasing something to early in their career because like he really hit his stride when he became cougar melon camp not johnny melon camp um you know and he was giving us little ditties about jack and diane that's when that man i think it's john melon camp who has a really like minor key song that i really like it's like blood on the scarecrow it's a really good song it came up on my spotify one day i was it was like the for you radio or whatever and it was like this really minor key, almost REM sounding instrumental. And he's singing about like, I guess the crop farm crisis in Canada that was happening at the time about how people's farms were getting like bought up and they had to move and shit. It was good though. It was like blood on the scarecrow. I'd check that song out if, uh, if I were you. Um, what are the comments saying? I'm gonna read them, whether you want me to or not. You can suck my nuts. 
That was inappropriate. Um, I like his 90s stuff, but also not a big Bowie fan. I like. I think if I would like any period of Bowie, it would have to be his 90s stuff. Because he did um, Jump, They Say, and I'm Deranged. I love I'm Deranged. I think that's a great song, but uh, it's mainly because of the music. But Bowie's haunting vocals kind of fit really well on that track, actually. Funny how secrets can travel. I start to believe. Something, something. Um, Mike Nisner did a great David Bowie video, and I got to rewatch it again. Maybe I'll watch it initially. Um, I had teachers who hated REM, mostly because of Michael Stipe. Yeah, Michael Stipe was a pretty divisive guy because uh, I could see like art teachers hating Michael Stipe because it's like his couplets don't even make sense. Don't don't follow Michael Stipe as your artistic inspiration because he's a bad writer, children, a very bad writer. And I should know I'm a teacher at a local community college and he's on tour right now. So... I am the authority on this, on, on, on what it takes to be good. God, this light is making my fucking... Earlier it was my eyes that were itching. Pineapple Moon, Phil Collins had the best voice. I Okay, so that's a toss-up. So Michael Stipe, Billy Corgan, Phil Collins. Those are three voices that I would love to have. It's and I, couldn't, I couldn't really pick because, yes, Phil Collins had a... Uh, I really love the tone of his voice, too. Very unique tone. That 80s Phil Collins vocal tone... Is just intoxicating to me. Love it. R.E.M. was so much more than Jankle Pop. Ditto the Smiths. R.E.M. from Murmur to Monster. What an amazing run of albums. Uh, yeah, I would agree. That's probably their best run was from, um, well, Chronic Town to Monster. Um, New Adventures in High Five was like, ugh. It's, I couldn't believe that they had like dipped so much from Monster to New Adventures. But then they kind of came back with Up. And then it was a little suspect after that. But, uh, yeah, really chronic town to, like, monster was the – but, I mean, even then, we're talking about, like, an eight-album run or something close to that. So, I mean, that's a damn good run. Billy Corgan is a Tom DeLonge of the 90s era. Both had voices that were their own, but today they are not great live. Yeah. I don't know what happened to Tom DeLonge's voice, man. He went through, like, a second puberty because he was singing like this, all the small things. Now, now it's like, oh, all the small things, two car toothbrings. Sounds like he's in pain singing these songs now. I don't know why his voice dropped like an octave deeper between like take off your pants and no, between self-titled and like neighborhoods. It was like a seven year period where Tom went through a second puberty. <laughs> I get the feeling Josh doesn't like Bowie. <laughs> Nah, not me. I love him. He's my favorite. Nadir. Oh, the worst, the lowest, low point. Okay, cool. Nadir. Huh. I never hear that used in a sentence in, like, out. Oh, then again, I hang out with a bunch of bar flies all the time. I'm not I'm not exactly chilling with scholars. Um, if y'all if y'all like R.E.M., you'll like tra Tragically Hip. Give me a tragically hip album to start off on. And I might check it out if I remember, which I probably won't. Um, yeah, Fall Out Boy covering Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. Um, I listened to it one time. I don't, you know, whatever. They updated the lyrics. I know Anthony Fantano had a whole, like, freak out on it, saying how, like, the lyrics were really cringe. I didn't think they were that bad. It was just, like, whatever. Um, I'm sorry. Did I say I was going to get through this list tonight? Ah, my fucking nose. Won't stop itching. <laughs> how about Phil Collins today? What, his voice? Fuck no. No, 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 no. I will keep my own voice over current day Phil Collins. I don't know what happens to all these guys with unique voices, but th their shit never ages well. Like, it's always the ones with, like, the most, like, solid, not very interesting voice. But, it's, well, I take it back. Peter Gabriel has a unique voice, and he sounds he sounds very strong on his last record that he put out, like, last year. I believe it was last year. He sounds great, and his songs are still good. 
Man, perfect example of like the candle that burns brightest burns out the quickest because Peter's just been smooth sailing this whole time. Never really had a bad record. Um, just he still is very fluent and intellectual when he speaks. He's not like Phil, who's like <laughs> someone put in the comments. Phil looks like an old nutsack now. <laughs> he really does. It's mean, but like Jesus, that guy aged like a fine milk. Um, 80s so Collins, that amazing steroid adult voice. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, yeah, the middle eight of Mama is the reason he's in a wheelchair now, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like, hey, at least he committed that to record, though. The, 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 the middle bit from Mama, man, where he's really going for it. He gave that to us then, so he now he must suffer. That He's paying the price of uh, hitting those high notes in, in Mama. Um, hot take. I like Blink-182 with Matt Skiba because it features two people that can sing. Yeah, I mean, they can technically sing, but their voices are so bland and auto-tuned that it's like... It, I, when I listened to um, California and 19 or whatever it was called, um, or nine, I think it was, I could not tell you who was singing when. Like, Mark and Matt's voice were so similar, and it, and it was just boring. Like, I, and yeah, I mean, I'm sure live their harmonies were tighter, but now they just throw auto-tune on, uh, on everything, and uh, even live, they use auto-tune live now, and I don't know, man, whatever. The jury's still out on that one. I mean, yes, it's fucked up that you have to use auto-tune live and it's a lie but um a lot of people probably don't even care <laughs> thank you mono grinded about my brief salisbury hill cover um i my voice just so doesn't sound it's not even the same ballpark tonally as peter's that it would sound weird i feel like i'd sound like a bitch compared to the gabriel version um fully completely is a good start for tragically hip and then road apples but your first hip album should be phantom power so by you recommending tragically hip i'm assuming you're canadian because only canadians ever add i've never met an american that even knows who they are or is a fan and it, that would be a weird sight to meet an american who's a huge tragically hip fan they seem to be a strictly canadian um thing which is weird because if they're that good because i know a lot of canadian women actually because i used to do a true crime podcast and i guess women really like hearing about people being murdered and i do too but um i became acquainted acquaintances with a few of them and they all liked tragically hip so i guess tragically hip is a canadian band for the ladies i'm not discounting them because uh, i still will check them out you see how, how how fucking horizontal I'm getting right now? All right, let's uh let's finish this uh let's try to finish this list here. Josh, I have tragically hip saved. That means you got it loaded up in the barrel. You're gonna you're gonna listen to it later on. I guess I need to check it out. Three Canadian uh, women have have told me about it at this point. So, all right, let's see let's see what uh, old Johnny Mellencamp did here that was so egregious. Shortly after music manager Tony DeFries parted ways with David Bowie, he came across an Indiana kid named John Mellencamp with dreams of stardom and several years behind him on the bar band circuit. Well, our band has seven years behind us, and we're not big yet. Can we be big yet? That'd be great because uh, we're going to be closing in on 10 years of being uh, unsigned and untoured pretty much don't want that for my life his uh he renamed him johnny cougar secured a deal with mca and produced a record packed with covers like oh pretty woman and jailhouse rock he also told the press he discovered a new bruce springsteen critics didn't agree johnny cougar is a comically inept singer who unfortunately takes himself seriously damn man you know rolling stone you guys can really be some couple of cunts sometimes his debut album is full of uh, ridiculous posturing with nothing to back it up just another ready-made pop throwaway well boy did were they wrong because when jack and diane came out huh, well i think he proved them wrong because that certainly wasn't a ready-made pop throwaway song 
Uh, the album didn't even grace the Billboard 200. MCA swiftly dropped him, and he returned back to Indiana thinking he'd blown his one shot at success. Things changed just a couple years later when he moved to London and scored a hit with I Need a Lover. Oh, did, is that? I need a lover who won't drive me crazy. Is that what song that is? Oh, what is this monstrosity? Did the Jacksons 5 try to do a modern day Jackson record with no Michael? Huh? What's the date? 1989. I think they may have. It's in black and white. They trying to be like a little bit of NWA there with the black and white looking all serious. But how can anyone take you serious when you dress like you just like tripped and fell out of the gap? I mean, seriously, like. And they're all got the black aviate. Oh, God, dude. Joe Jackson had some strong ass sperm. All these motherfuckers look like Joe Jackson, especially Tito there. I wish you could see my fucking mouse. I'm pointing at the dude with the hat. Yeah, Joe Jackson had some mighty cum. But Michael paid to not look like Joe Jackson. And it worked because he cert when he died, he certainly did not look like uh, Joe Jackson, his dad. Michael Jackson had a little artistic or commercial use for his brothers in the 80s. Damn, that's one way to put it. Um, but he felt an obligation to join them for 84's underwhelming victory. Oh, I never listened to that album. I might know Michael was on it. I might check it out now. He even brought them on the road in 84 when, by all logic, he should have been playing stadiums as a solo act. When it came time to cut 89's to, uh, 2300 Jackson Street, Michael was unwilling to contribute anything more than vocals to the painfully saccharine title track. The rest was handled by his brothers and top-notch collaborators like Dion Warwick, Babyface, and Teddy Riley. Babyface was around in 89? And he was relevant, huh? Despite a few decent moments like nothing that compares to you, uh, uh, nothing here even dented the public consciousness. The Jacksons split up in the aftermath of its failure, only reforming for the occasional oldies gig. Damn. That's uh. That's 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 um. You know, they saw how big their brother was getting, and they're like, like come on, man. we got to be able to ride his coattail somehow. There's got to be a little bit of Michael's magical dancing dust that 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 comes our way, man. Like, we we got to at least sound kind of like Michael Jackson. He's our fucking brother. And they, they were never able to get it done. Yes, LaToya, because of Michael Jackson's same nose surgery, person yes she also doesn't look like joe jackson merely because they had the same exact fucking surgeon if you dude latoya's nose looks exactly like michael's did maybe a, she might have had like one or two less surgeries but it's like latoya you don't even have a music career like why are you trying to like i mean well, let's face it that whole like i got the nose surgery so i could hit the high notes easier yeah we all know that's bullshit he hated his fucking wide nose because his dad had that nose or whatever and he said every time he looked at it, it reminded him of his dad or whatever so he wanted to get surgery done to you know change his appearance i don't understand the whole um i mean i understand vitiligo and i mean i've definitely seen black and white people with vitiligo obviously it's more noticeable on black people but um <clears throat> how did he get a, all of his skin the one color i mean vitiligo it doesn't um it doesn't attack like all of your uh, uh, what is it, uh, melanin cells at the same time. It, it does it in patches. It's always patchy and splotchy. Are you telling me that he had some kind of weird body m makeup that he had to, to make himself one uniform color? I mean, he looked, I'm thinking about his uh, live in Budokan, and he kind of almost had like a, it looked very natural. I don't know. Jacko is wacko indeed. <clears throat> is the madonna tier list ever happening um yeah eventually i just don't know if i honestly after the videos i've been making i've been kind of on a roll and i think that video will uh will kind of tank it a little bit i don't know how many of how many people out there actually want to see a tier list of uh, madonna's albums though i would like to make it 
um, unoriginal, you realize now that if you're doing a Michael Jackson tier list, you do have to, uh, you have to do a Jackson five with it. I mean, whatever they, I go to tierlistmaker.com. I type in the name that I'm wanting to cover and then they give me what they have. And if I find a Michael Jackson tier list that also has the Jackson five record on it, then I will do that. But if they don't have that, then I won't be doing it. <laughs> Jerry Jackson was the best. I, I don't know if there was a, a Jerry Jackson, uh, fucking Johnny Jackson. Uh, I remember when Joe Jackson died and everyone was saying RIP to him. I was like, you know, he beat his children, right? Because of him, MJ did things to himself, causing an early grave. Yeah, pretty much. Um, a, tra a fucking tearless, a tragically hip. Oh, my God. Are they one of those bands that have like a fucking thousand albums? I hate bands like that. Steven Stills, 14 right by you. So I know he was part of Crosby, obviously part of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. So uh, I'm assuming he went on his own and it wasn't any good. Moving on. Nothing to say about it. Hey, Simon, you called it. Elton John, Leather Jackets. Oh, man, this fucking album. I remember going through a little bit of an Elton John phase many years ago. <clears throat> And I went on to Spotify to see, oh no, I went to like Wikipedia or something. I went to some discography place to see how many records this motherfucker had. Dude, he, in like the 80s alone, he released a new album like every fucking year. Like, the I'm Still Standing was off of just one of his many, he had a lot of crap in the 80s. And I don't mean crap as in, like, a, ge a generic term for stuff. I mean literal, like, shit. He had a lot of shit. Crappy albums in the 80s. And this one, I guess, takes the cake, as, as Simon predicted. <clears throat> Too Low for Zero was the one with uh, I'm, I'm Still Standing on It, right? All right, in 1986... Elton John was an absolute train wreck in 86. He was hopelessly addicted to cocaine. If somebody has to use the word hopelessly in front of addicted, like that's not good. That means like you're waking up doing lines of coke. Well, if you even sleep at all, I guess you're not sleeping if you're on coke. Um, he was hopelessly addicted to cocaine, dealing with major vocal problems due to polyps on his vocal cords. My singer actually has vocal polyps right now that she needs to deal with. And trapped in a loveless marriage to recording engineer Rena, Ren, Renee Blah. I know that's some kind of French thing. Blah. Renate Blah. Anyway. Uh, I think what, that, that was the chick, right? Like the, when he was like faking it, you know, like, like she was the beard for like a couple years or whatever. He was like, hey guys, I'm, not, I'm totally not gay. Look at me with this chick. Um, he was in no condition to record a new album, but he pounded out one uh, he pounded out one a year like clockwork in those days, no matter what was happening in his life. Yeah, see, like I said, this one, however, was his first without a top 40 single since the early 70s. That's because there isn't one memorable melody or hook on the entire record. God, I could say that about so many records. There's not one memorable hook or melody on the entire record. There's so many records I could say that about. Um, and the production is horrid even by the feeble 1980s standards. That's a good description of production, how production sounded in the 80s. Feeble. It did sound very feeble, most production. Um, D.D. Ramon, Standing in the Spotlight, feeble production. Leather Jackets has a lot of awful songs on it, and there's some uh, very uneven work in the 80s and 90s due to the fact that I was concentrating on what I was I wasn't concentrating on what I was doing he said in 2001 and because of all the drugs of course I like how the drugs is just like a little afterthought well you see I wasn't concentrating on what I was doing uh and there was the drugs too of course small detail no need to really focus on it too much uh he's called it the worst album in his catalog several times even though his writing partner Bernie Taupin differs quote I think there's actually a couple of really good songs in there, he told Rolling Stone in 2013. I certainly think it's a low, it's the low point. I certainly don't think it's the low point. 
Sorry, Bernie. We're going with Elton on this one. Was it Bernie? You just wrote the lyrics, dude. Like the music is kind of like the vehicle to transport the lyrics. So if you got a shitty vehicle, then the the lyrics don't fucking matter. I mean, I've never heard of I've never heard anybody say, "Oh my god, this album sucks. There's no memorable hooks or good melodies on here." But man, the lyrics are just fantastic. I guess you could say that about a Bob Dylan record. Oh, oh. Uh, moving on. Van Morrison, latest record project, volume one. Wow, could you get any more creative with that title? Latest record project, volume one. And why is there one square dot or one square pattern there? amongst all the circles that bothers the ever-loving OCD fuck out of me why did he do that do you see the square I know you can't see my mouse but there's a square pattern amongst those those dots and it's random it's not even at the front fuck are you doing Van Morrison you dumb idiot this oh this came out in 2021 holy shit Van Morrison has always been an eccentric, but he crossed over to the right wing to right wing troll territory. Ooh, on 2021's latest record, Project Volume One, Morrison's new record bears a strange resemblance to the unhinged rambling of a pandemic era internet. More often than not, its 28 tracks come across as a collection of shit posts, subtweets, and Reddit rants set to knock off John Lee Hooker's grooves. Uh, that is not a typo. There are 28 songs across two discs and 127 interminable minutes with titles like Stop Bitchin' Do Something, Why Are You on Facebook, and They Own the Media. Who exactly is the they you're referring to here, Van? Uh, sadly, the music is as lazy as his thinking. We'd almost feel bad for the guy if he wasn't using his art as a way to spread dangerously stupid messages about vaccines. Let's just hope there's not a volume two coming out at some point. We don't need to hear Van's take on Hunter Biden. <laughs> Holy shit. I got to, ch I'm, dude, this list just keeps giving. That sounds awesome. I can't wait to check that album out. Why are you on, that? what a fucking boomer. He's not even a boomer. He's a fucking, what, the, the golden age or the greatest age? The, whatever generation before the, the boomers. He's one of those. But that, that is some fucking boomer shit right there. Stop bitching, do something. What are you doing, Van? Putting out this shit-ass record that literally, uh, when I saw 2021, I was shocked because this cover looks like some bullshit fucking uh, thrift shop record that you'd find in the 70s with this one square pattern for some reason. With the laziest fucking title I've ever heard. Wow. I definitely need to listen to this record. That's oh, happening. I got news for you guys. I'm going to listen to that. And I might make a video about it. All right, let's see what you guys are saying in the comment section. There's like four people that are <laughs> commenting in here. They're doing all the talking. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Talking about Tragically Hip. They only have 12 albums or so. They were around since the 80s and stopped in the mid... Uh, only 12 albums. That's it. Only only a dozen albums that are probably one hour each. Um, let's see here. Elton has some junk in his discography. Yeah, no. Elton John, I've said this once. I'll say it again. Elton John... Ow! I just dug my nose ring into the inside of my cartilage. Um, Ellen John, I, I would not spite you for buying a greatest hits record and calling it a day with him. I mean, even Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, which is like seen as like the classic Ellen John album, I would say like half the record's good and the other half is just kind of boring to me. Like songs like Gray Seal and Jamaican Jerk Off. Um, those songs like kind of suck. Uh, so he's got a song, I don't know. Like, so even like his greatest revered album, I'd say half of it is good um so yeah i would not spite anybody for buying like a comprehensive greatest hits elton john record and calling it a day basically assuming you've heard every good thing that he's done he's not he's got a lot of really boring shit 
Uh, I really wonder what 80s Led Zeppelin would have been like had John, if John Bond was still alive. They probably would have started to suck, just like Nirvana, just like Amy Winehouse, just like The Doors, any of these bands. I mean, we've seen the ones that survive. They just eventually like burn out or they or fade away rather i'm trying i'm trying not to recall kurt cobain's suicide note it's better to burn out than to fade away um oh yeah clapton was one of those guys too that jumped on that whole like pandemic era like you know don't tell me what to do like i'm this is what I'll say for myself. Um, I had COVID in 2020. I, I was a hipster. I had the original strain before most people had it. And um, when the vaccine came out, I got, I think I got it uh, three shots of the vaccine. Cause I can't, this here's my thing. I can't get COVID again. Cause if I get it again, I'm going to miss work. And if I miss work, I won't make rent for this month. Because I can't afford to miss work. I'm a karaoke DJ. I have gigs. I don't have sick days. So if I miss a gig, I miss a nice chunk of change. So, you know, I, do I think they, they there's weird, funky shit in the vaccine stuff or whatever? It's like, uh, no. And also, my friend who's extremely right-wing, and just to goes, goes to show you I can be friends with anybody as long as we don't talk politics all the time i finally had to tell him one day i'm like dude i love you we're gonna have to stop talking about politics like we can't this friendship is uh we used to talk about music we used to talk about girls now all you want to talk about is right-wing maga shit and he, we, we finally i finally got him to back out of the fucking woods with all that shit but um he literally told me in 20 around 2021 he's like he's like ha 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 all you vac all you guys who got the vaccine are gonna be dead in two years but you're too stupid to realize here it is three years later and we're all still alive so that's all i'm gonna say about any of that um god my fucking nose it's gonna be gone by the time um did dwg ever play in tifton georgia we played some gig at some weird um it was like a some city that was outside of atlanta might have been alpharetta i don't remember but we played a like a restaurant there and there was like nobody hardly anybody there you like how i was gonna say nobody but i wanted to give myself a little bit more credit so at the last minute i said there was like nobody there was a little there's a little bit of pe people there no we've never played in valdosta we would Boy, you have you got connections, man. You you book us the show, and we might be there if it seems like it's worth our time. Uh, but I refuse to believe anyone legit enjoys Mr. Bungle. I don't know. I, I think Mr. Bungle probably has some decent stuff uh, if you give it a chance. I haven't found anything that I personally love listening to Mr. Bungle, but all oh, the music geeks like Mr. Bungle. Um, by the way, In Utero is my favorite Nirvana album. Never mind is a banger, but it's like Michael Jackson's Thriller. All the songs are classics, but I like how Dangerous flows. Fair enough. I mean, I think, uh, I don't know. In Utero kind of depresses me. Um, uh, Never mind, like, gets me, like, jazzed about alternative rock music. In Utero, like, bums me out. That's just always the feeling I've gotten anytime I listen to In Utero. And as far as Dangerous and Thriller goes, why they buried Michael Jackson's vocals in the 90s is something that will always befuddle me. It, listen to Jam, like the first song on Dangerous. When Jam kicks in, first of all, it's like a minute and a half of just instrumental with some guy going, ain't too hot for me to jam. Ain't too hot for me to jam. And then Michael Jackson comes in, he's like, and he's like, his voice is so fucking low in the mix. And it's like, here you have one of like the greatest vocalists of that time period, and you're going to bury his, his fucking voice in the mix like that? Like, I never understood that decision. That was really weird. Go with it. Go with it, jam. Jam on it. I can't. I couldn't control that just then, guys. That just literally happened. I couldn't. I couldn't help it. That's scary. 
Okay, Beach Boys, Summer in Paradise. All right, now not only did – this is the wrong album cover, by the way. What is this? This is not what the cover of – this is not what the cover of Summer in Paradise looks like at all. That's weird. Okay. Uh, Todd in the Shadows did a video on this album, which made me – because I like the Beach Boys. It made me curious to seek the album out. Of course, it's on YouTube because every – random thing under the sun is on youtube i like the album i think it's i think it's pretty damn good honestly um it yeah the production is bad it's bad 90s production so it's like a it's like a hangover from the 80s actually real thin snare drums uh there's even a record scratch in one of the songs i think it's a good record um it's cheesy but like in a fun way like I don't know. I, I I thought it was I legitimately thought it was good. Mike Love does these really low yeah and and it's like really loud in the mix. And uh that that also came off as super cringe and very dad oriented to me. Like I could just see someone's dad like while that song's playing being like, Yeah to their kid to try to make him laugh and it's like Ugh, cringe. But uh no, I like the album. If you uh, look it up on YouTube, uh, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's a fun, stupid album. It's not, it's, it's not great, but like, um, I don't know. I thought I like, I've, I've listened to it several times and there's not a whole lot of songs I don't like on there. And I know the shit they're going to say about like, like, Oh, it was so cheesy. Oh, they tried to sound like they, they did a song that, they pretty much did have a song in there that sounded identical to Kokomo. But you know what? I really like Kokomo, so bring it on. Like, I'm fine with that. Um, no, I, I I, got nothing else to say about it. I think it's, um, I think it's, I just think it's a good album. I disagree with uh, with that choice. It shouldn't be that this high up on the list. And there's another one. Todd in the Shadows did a video about Credence Clearwater Revival's Mardi Gras, uh, where you had Stu Cook, the bassist, and uh, the drummer, whose name I forget, and then John Fogarty. Uh, the three guys, well, then you got um, Tom, was it Tom Fogelberg, the brother of John? They all, well, Tom quit the band, right? So it's just the three of them. And they're like, well, we want to write songs, too. And Tom Fogarty's finally just like, all right, guys, you know what? You want to write songs? Fuck it. Write your songs. That's my best John Fogarty impression. I'm sorry. Um, and so the drummer has, like, a couple songs in there. The bassist has a couple songs. And they sing the songs as well. They are so bad. Uh, John Fogarty is a legendary American voice in music. Um, we Americans, we have a few legends that are just that cannot be fucked with like just voice wise elvis janice joplin fucking uh anyway jim morrison michael jackson john fogarty is in that fold that dude can sing he's got a unique voice when you hear a credence song you know immediately right away it's a credence song this fucking album bears the name credence clearwater revival but then you got these other fucking fart knockers singing lead vocals on there just ruining the legacy this band had pumped out like like two or three or four hit albums in the span of two or three or four years then of course there is infighting and then fogarty finally gives the wheel over to uh hey all right you want to write your fucking songs write your songs so they write their songs awful awful the album did not do well fogarty's songs were the only ones that were listenable but even those were kind of lukewarm at best um although he did he did have a song uh to when like tomorrow never comes that's probably the best song in the album that's about his parents getting a divorce very sad song good melody but yeah yeah no this is uh definitely a horrible album i do know a thing or two probably because i've listened to the damn Dude, this is you might as well call a, the final top ten uh, Todd in the Sh Shadows uh, playlist because uh, he did a video on this one too. Um, you read some of these fucking comments. Some of these fucking comments. 
They're starting to piss me off. I'm getting new metal now. Really starting to piss me off. All these fucking comments making me quite mad. I don't know what the fuck any of that was about. I'm sorry. My voice was not warmed up enough to do that. <clears throat> Ouch. God, there's too many of them. Government website by Van Morrison is... Oh, okay. I thought for some reason, I was thinking of Jim Morrison. I'm like, websites didn't exist when Jim Morrison was alive. Um... It's the Beach Boys that nobody likes. I like it. God, this record, you, you guys are all hating on the Beach Boys record. Okay. Reading, reading, reading. Um, I hear MJ, I can hear MJ perfectly though. It is a new Jack Swing album. Can you? I always th I never thought that mix was high enough, man. It's like Yeah, Stranger in Moscow is a great song. I like to talk about politics to friends and family, not strangers online. Same in here, even if I agree I rarely do. Uh yeah, I I mean I obviously that it's rare that I ever bring politics up and I like to keep it that way. Because I'm not a fucking authority figure on it. I don't care. I mean, I care in the sense of like, you know, I care about what happens to our country and all that. But like, I'm not going to talk about that shit on here. I, go, I come here to forget about that stuff. True Seed. I think the vocals and jam were meant to be more of a backing instrument. And it was imagined that the streets full of funk dancers would be jamming out to it. But it did not have the intellect to, to appreciate. The, but did not have the intellect to appreciate lyrics. Maybe. I don't know. Very late to say that, but I was doing something. They don't care about us slaps. Yep, that's a good song. All I want to say is that they don't really care about all I want to. Anyway. Kokomo is not on this one. No, it was uh, uh, Still Cruising was the name of the album that had Kokomo on it. Still Cruising wasn't a bad song either. Still cruising after all these years. When we go cruising. John Fogarty is one of the boomers I find to be cute. He's a he's fucking adorable. I listened to his autobiography, uh, his audiobook or whatever, a couple months ago. And, like, just his little voice when he, like, re like when he talks about his life, you just want to give the guy a hug. Be like, oh, John, I don't want anything to bad to happen to you. Seems like such a sweet guy. And he got fucked so hard by his manager god did he get fucked way worse than taylor swift ever could have dreamed of getting fucked and i don't mean that in a sexual way because she i mean fucked by her label god he got fucked by his manager so bad. you should uh if you have any interest in uh rock or rock stars or whatever the fuck then uh check out john fogarty's um autobiography i'm a canadian i hate rush that fuck's wrong with you, Pink Pools. But I appreciate the five dollars. Like if you hate Mike Love. <laughs> yes, Mike Love is a douche. But uh, I, I I like I like that that album, man. I just Mardi Gras is pretty bad. Stu Cook can't sing. No, he cannot. He has that song Door to Door, where he's talking about like. And if you, 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 you dab it up and put it on the carpet and you wipe it, and it's like talk, literally, it's like, what are you singing about right now? He's talking about being like a door to door salesman or some shit. Like, it's insane. Yeah, John Fogarty was CCR. The other guys in that band were such creeps and utterly delusional. To hear them speak, you'd think the success of the band was every bit as much to do with them. I know, dude. I know. But. Weirdly enough, um, yeah, I'm a Canadian, or I'm I'm an, I'm an American, and I hate Drake. Um, it's weird that like when John Fogerty finally did go out on his own, it's like that that bottle of uh, you know rock juice that he saved for all those CCR classics. Is he just like he well he did put me in coach or whatever? That was like the only hit that he had that he had like on his own when he went solo. So it was like. 
well, maybe the band did have some kind of creative thing that helped him out or whatever. Um, by the way, if anyone wants to see Drake twirling his big schlong around online, there's video of that now. I don't know where to find it, but I was shown it last night against my will. Okay, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, The American Dream. I, yeah, this album sucks because they all got together and reunited with Neil Young, and their heart really wasn't in it, and the songs weren't good. Elvis, fun in Acapulco. Let me guess, was this one of his movie soundtrack albums that he was forced at gunpoint to do by the colonel? I, I know why this album sucks. Elvis put out like a million records at some point because they were trying to capitalize on on his inconsequential movies that he was doing at the time. And I'm sure this was yet another one of the those cases where they're just trying to coast off of the Elvis name and the Elvis celebrity. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to read this. Oh, what do we got here? Yoko and uh, John Lennon album? Unfinished music number one, Two Virgins. Now, eh, I, I, I was going to make a virgin joke, but honestly, it, 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 it wouldn't have landed. Um, what, this came out in 1968? That's pretty early. Beatles were still together at that point. All right, well, let's see what, uh, let's see what this is about. From a strictly historical perspective, Unfinished Music Number no. 1, Two Virgins is an, is an extremely important album. The 68 LP marked the beginning of John Lennon's solo career and his co creative collaboration with Yoko Ono while offering a window into their private world. The nude image of John Lennon and Ono on the cover uh, outraged the religious right and helped generate a ton of attention for a fledgling rock magazine called Rolling Stone when the publication put it on the cover. And this is how Rolling Stone pays you back they put you high up on their worst albums of all time by good artists um uh blah, blah, blah. from a musical perspective however unfinished music number one two virgins is painfully dull and generally pointless the two 14 minute sides consist of little uh, little but inaudible bits of spoken dialogue tape loops sound effects and ono of course fucking wailing because that's what yoko ono fucking does because she's a psychopath. Psychopath. I said that weird. There's almost nothing musical about it, and getting through the full 28 minutes is a brutal slog. Two years later, John Lennon Plastic Ono Band hit shelves. It's the polar opposite of unfinished music, number one, two virgins, in every imaginable way. In other words, it's perfect. I don't know if I'd go that far about the Plastic Ono Band record being perfect, but that's just me. Apparently, oh, what's her face? The uh, hyper feminist uh, Lindsay Ellis uh, did a whole video that you can only see through this paywall video streaming site called, um, I forget the name of it. Uh, she did a whole video about how Yoko didn't actually break the Beatles up. That'd be interesting, I guess, to see. I don't, I don't think Yoko broke the Beatles up. I think uh, they were tired of all of that. They just wanted to do their own thing. Raphian, bro, I love your Smashing Pumpkins content. You nailed it on the Autumn Reviews. I wish some of that type of feedback would get through Billy's thick skull. Oh, Billy, do Billy doesn't have to care what a nobody like me has to say about his, uh, his music. But I also don't have to spare his feelings whenever I talk about whatever he puts out lately. That was fun doing those series of uh, Autumn review Autumn Reviews. Um, I don't see the Pumpkins doing anything for a while. I mean, that was a triple fucking album, and there was even more songs on the, uh, if you bought the actual the LPs, the records. Um, Canada has not had an authentic rapper like Drake since Snow. Oh, God. And farmer, skid a little boom bam, then licky boom boom down. Skiddly diddly 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 wham Informer <laughs> Pink Pools has got the idea um, I knew it was coming I knew it was coming one of these But the uh, The Yoko John shit I respect Elvis but I can't stand his voice uh, yeah, it's not it's not a voice that really, I don't know. 
It, it, it's so like it's a loaded voice. It's there's like there's too much like I think of too many people's grandmas when I hear Elvis's voice. So it's like I can't I can't listen to it unobjectively at this point. Uh, da, 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 da. Looking, looking, looking at the comments. All right, let's move on. We're almost done. Damn it! I refuse to make a part three. Black Sabbath forbidden. Well, it's a Sabbath album that came out in 1995. Um, yeah, it's probably not good. Who's even fronting the band at this point? Forbidden is a Black Sabbath record in only the loosest possible sense. Guitarist Tony, Tony Iommi was the sole remaining member at this point jesus christ and even latter-day members like ronnie james dio were nowhere to be seen the group had essentially been in the wilderness for a decade at this point and their their record label convinced them that ice t could come into the studio and make the band seem hip and modern again what oh man i think i gotta do this album it was sold to us that Ice-T was going to be producing bassist Neil Murray told Rolling Stone in 2021. And then it turned out, uh, and then it turned out to be his guitar player from body count. I don't think anybody really thought that he brought any suitable ideas to the production or how the mix wound up. We were mostly pretty disappointed, but it was like, here you are journalists and fans. Here's an album you can really tear into. It gave them too much ammunition with how the album sounded. The band wasn't too happy with it and nobody else was either. When the album tanked with fans and critics, Iommi had little choice but to reunite with Ozzy, the Ozzy lineup, and pretend like the whole Ice T thing. Never yeah, but did Ice T do vocal? Who did vocals? Are they saying Ice T did vocals? Let me tell you something. Body count sucks, and I don't know how they've been able to have such a long career. The Ice-T is not a vocalist, like, or a singer or whatever he's trying to do. I heard one of, I heard Body Count, they're on one of those late night, you know, comedy talk shows. <coughs> Conan or something like that. And Body Count was on there and it was, it was just fucking awful. I was like, how is this a, why, like, how is this a band? Why do people like this? Like. So I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm going to listen to probably all of these albums to see if anything just sticks out more than the others um, as particularly egregious. But um, in, 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 in fucking all caps, this is one of the worst metal albums ever. I got to listen to it. Worse than Lulu and Saint Anger. It has iced tea on the opening track. My God. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to. I think I'm, I'm definitely going to have to check this album out. This was the last Sabbath album with uh, Tony Martin. What was it? Was that? Oh, he did vocals, but ICT helped in the opening track. What? When, when will people figure out that like if you're a legacy act like Black Sabbath, you don't have to ever fucking be hip. Just be your band, and people will want to see it for what it is. But I guess they didn't, I don't know, maybe they didn't consider themselves a legacy band at that point. But it's like, bro, you totally were. And then by the 90s, Black Sabbath was a legacy that nobody was looking for the, a new Black Sabbath record at that point. It's like, just play all your old shit that, you know, even the Dio stuff was pretty good. Um, and that's all you got to do. Don't write, you, please don't write anything new. <laughs> it comes a point, man, where it's like, just you're... You were writing when you were young, and at the time, the shit you wrote was relevant. And then you, if you stay around for multiple decades, you're just going to keep writing shit from, I don't know, unless you're like Rush, where you can like adapt. But Black Sabbath is not one of those bands. Um, okay, let's get through this list here, people. Daddy's got to go and get some more beers to nurse his hangover. Oh, we got a Dylan one on here, Down in the Groove came out in 88 it, i i feel like dylan like wasn't he just like a 60s guy like his only relevant shit was in the 60s so he's like even in 88 he's almost like 30 years removed from being like all that relevant i mean even having him on we are the world or whatever like even by then it was like 
Yeah, there's Uncle Bob over there, you know, like we had to invite him out of, uh, you know, obligation, but he's not really, uh, doesn't really contribute a whole lot to the zeitgeist nowadays. Dylan aficionados have been arguing for decades about whether or not he reached the nadir of his 80s creative funk on 1986's Locked, uh, Knocked Out Loaded or 88's Down in the Groove. It's certainly a close call, but Knocked Out Loaded has one certifiable masterpiece, his epic Sam Shepard collaboration, Brownsville Girl. Down in the Groove, meanwhile, doesn't have a single demon moment. It's a stiff, lifeless collection of covers. Rock Rangers to rocks rank strangers to me, Shenandoah collaborations with Grateful Dead lyricist Robert Hunter and originals that are marred by cheesy 80s drums and synth sounds and overall feeling of extreme laziness. Eric Clapton, Bob Weir, Jerry Garcia, Mark Knopfler, and the Clash is Paul Simonon? Simonon? Paul Simonon? 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 Uh, join the festivities but even their creative star power cannot salvage this disaster days after it came out however dylan began his never-ending tour it was a rejuvenating experience that meant we never got an album quite as awful as down the groove ever again even if he came pretty close with 1990s under the red sky did he sing like this like this will be just will be hate that guy's voice god it's annoying oh what this is pantera's first record Everybody knows this is, a, this is an awful record. It's damn 83. So like it took them like 7 years to even become somewhat cool. Wow. Reading comments here. Traveling Wilburys, Wilburys or whatever. That was a pretty good. They had some songs. Blood on the tracks. Not true. Dylan, 1989's Oh Mercy and 97's Time Out of Mind are great albums. You may not like him, but he has classic albums all throughout the 70s as well and 80s. The 80s was a tough time. Yeah, I mean, it's like, like, like I've been saying this whole time. All these artists that came from the 60s and 70s, they all grabbed for those drum machines in the 80s. And it's like, bro, you don't know how to use that right. Put it back. Let Depeche Mode use it and you just... Look, look, see R.E.M. over there? See how they're using real drums? See how they're not doing guitar solos in their songs because they felt like guitar solos dated songs, which turns out to be 100% correct because anytime I listen to uh, a rock, a hard rock song from the 80s and they start doing that typical shreddy guitar solo, it's like, yeah, then there's the 80s right there. Oh, it's a White Snake song. This sounds pretty good. So, And there's the 1980s right there. Yep, the guitar solo. Yep, there's the 1980s. Uh, yeah, Dylan, do more like REM and less. Don't don't be. Don't, don't I know it's cool. It's in a, it's a it's a drum in a box. I get it. And you hit the pad and it makes a kick drum sound. But you don't need to be touching that, Robert, Robert Feinstein or whatever his real name is. Yeah, you know, all the all the fucking Jewish people uh, did not want to let their Jewishness be known in the. 70s and 80s isn't that white right gary lee wine rib aka getty lee um all right pantera they're this is their first they were like what hair metal when they started out now this is before uh philip and selmo i believe pantera are undoubtedly one of the greatest metal bands of their era what a lot of people don't realize however is that they were one of the worst metal bands of an earlier era if you don't if you need to be convinced, check out their 1983 de debut LP, Metal Magic, where they sound like a generic B-list hair metal band. To be fair, Dimebag Daryl and Vinnie Paul were still teenagers when they made this album, and it was produced by their father, country singer Jerry Abbott. They also hadn't joined forces with frontman Phil Anselmo. His predecessor, Terry Glazer, is a hopeless Paul Stanley wannabe. This is a Pantera in name only but it still counts as a genuine Pantera album. And it's absolutely horrid. This is Saturday Night Live with Will Fair. I don't know what that voice was. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd like to give that album a listen for like two or three songs and I'd turn it the fuck off. Um, yeah, I do think it's a little, it's a little unfair to place a debut album in, in like, yeah. I think because Pantera went on to have such big success um, that it's, I think even they clowned on this record, you know? 
Uh, so I think that's why it's it's not as egregious. Um, so yeah, we're almost done. <coughs> oh, a Yes album? What? Union, 1991. Yes. Okay, what, what's going to be the angle here? Um, by the late 80s, prog rockers, yes, had split into two feuding versions of the band on the verge of a very expensive court battle. Did not know that. But then again, I'm not the biggest yes fan in the world. There was the owner of a lonely heart, yes, featuring drummer Alan White, bassist Chris Squire, keyboardist Tony Kay, and guitarist Trevor Rabin. And there was the 70s throwback, yes, featuring drummer Bill Bruford, keyboardist Wh Rick Wakeman, guitarist Steve Howe, and singer John Anderson. Damn, that really is like two different yeses because like both both camps have like a lot of core, like core members. I guess the latter is probably the more yesier of the two yeses. I mean, fucking Bill Bruford, Rick Wakeman, Steve Howe, John Anderson. That's that's kind of the band right there. But then you got Chris Squire, who's like bass talents are. Un, well, they are very much matched. Getty Lee was hugely influenced by Chris Squire, but that's another story. They ultimately realized that a yes divided against itself cannot stand, and they formed into a singular version of Super Yes and booked an arena tour. Oh, I think I remember this. I remember this now. They also decided to cut an album. The problem was that we were three quarters of a way through an album, Wakeman told Rolling Stone in 2019. They were three quarters of a way through an album. So the album was given to a guy who shouldn't even be allowed a food mixer, <laughs> let alone an album. Damn, throwing some shade. He did the most dreadful job on the Union album. Part of that dreadful job involved bringing in anonymous studio musicians, even though this was a band with two guitarists, two drummers, and two keyboardists. I called it the Onion album, Wakeman said, because it made me cry. <laughs> the fuck? That's uh, that's funny. Um, uh, yes, yes, yes was one of those bands that uh, prog bands has had less trouble transitioning into the '80s than a lot of bands from the '70s, because prog bands in general are more open-minded and talented, in my view. Um, yeah, like was nine hundred two one five. That's a great album. Big Generator was good. Uh, those are just solid 80s albums and they sound big they don't sound thin um, especially 90215 that's a great I mean uh, great songs on there um, I mean Rush they transitioned pretty fucking seamlessly from the 70s right through the 80s had a big career in the 80s Genesis their most popular peak of their career was in the 80s with their Invisible Touch and self-titled albums um yeah prog bands had no problem navigating through the 80s um and then and then right into the 90s from there that's why i love prog rock people it's the best genre of rock music if you're gonna pick one union is not good at all but not close to their worst album uh what is this what are you guys talking about vinnie vincent underrated psychopath of the industry uh, apparently, he, she charges people hundreds of dollars to watch the equivalent of cameo video clips. Vinnie Vincent is a fucking weird ass. I like how Gene Simmons said in his autobiography about Vinnie Vincent, he's like, and he just looked weird. <laughs> just like, I, I love, I, only Gene Simmons would uh, have the Neanderthalic nature to be like, he, he dressed funny. He couldn't play. Or no, he didn't say he couldn't play. That was the one redeeming value of Vinnie Vincent. But he was like, he, and he just looked weird. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah. Surprise, no chili peppers on the list. The one with Mommy, Where's My Daddy, Friends. And Mommy, Where's Daddy? God, that song. Oof. They're... I never realized how much I was actually going to hate like the first three Chili Peppers records like Uplift, Mofo, Self-Titled and um, whatever the other one was. They were just bad. 
and and they did stupid silly shit like that yeah i'm surprised surprised we haven't gotten a chili peppers right they're early um i mean they they definitely like straightened up by the time they put out mother's milk that's a great album but um yeah man their first three albums were just fucking rough aside from like the singles um pretty unlistenable i saw yes they gave a good show even though you could absolutely tell they hated each other yeah i need to i don't know i need to give you yes more of a try i guess um oh freaky styly yeah unoriginal i swear to god why'd you have to do that i was getting to it man uh velvet underground squeeze uh what, what is this where you got the fucking i don't care unoriginal just spoiled it so let me just get to number one already Kanye West, yay. Um, first of all, like, was it that, was it that bad of an album? Uh, I listened to it like once, dude. And I don't remember like being like, I mean, that, dude, the only reason this is number one is because all that bullshit Kanye West has been saying lately because like i truly think he's off his medication um he's a scary guy man the shit he's saying nowadays <clears throat> um yeah the stuff the stuff kanye's been saying lately about like jews and um how you know just the typical shit that they like saying about how Jews control the international media and banking and all this other kind of shit and um, talking about how everyone has good qualities, even Hitler um, and wearing the White Lives Matter shirt. Now, now, if he just did the White Lives Matter thing, it's like, OK, that's Kanye being a troll. That's what he does. But all that other shit is just like, damn, dude, you can't really come back from a lot of that shit. Uh, he's he's fucking nuts. But uh I don't that this is the only reason he's number one It's the only reason and yes he is a genuinely brilliant artist um but as a person he's a fucking gone off the reservation big time let's see what uh rolling stone has to say about this the past five years of Kanye West's life have been so unbelievably sad and self-destructive, culminating with a horrifying series of interviews in late 2022 where he praised Hitler and defended Nazis. He did do those things. Uh, that his recent albums have almost been an afterthought to most people. They're certainly the worst works of his career, and it would be easy to pick Jesus as King or Donda as the single lowest moment. Yeah, that's what I would go with is Jesus as King. It's like some stupid gospel record. Like, seriously, yeah, why wouldn't you have picked that? But we're going with 2018's Yay because it marks the beginning of the most disastrous artistic and personal collapse in the history of popular music, clocking in at a mere 23 minutes. Damn, that's it? And he calls that, that's an, that's an EP, bro. That's not a record. Um, the chaotic half-baked album was cut in Wyoming right around the time he told TMZ that slavery was a choice and started wearing a MAGA hat in public. The uproar over his slavery remark caused him to rework many of the yay lyrics over a, fr uh, a frantic two weeks shortly before the album dropped, which explains screeds like, just imagine if they caught me on a wild day. Now I'm on 50 blogs getting 50 calls. My wife's calling, screaming, saying we about to lose it all. The Kanye scandals of 2018 seem almost quaint compared to recent issues, but he's never made music less vital than this. No, Jesus is king is worse. I can promise you. It's worse. It's a shitty gospel record. Now it's me. It's just me. Hi. <laughs> I've been doing this too long. God damn. Uh yeah, no, I disagree on that. I don't think that's uh I don't think that's his worst album. Um he is a very problematic individual, that is for sure. Um he has done some great music in the past. And I don't even like rap that much, but I will give him, I will give it to him that he has had his moments with, that have been really good. Uh, Yeezus was my favorite Kanye West record, but Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, 
also really good. Um, <laughs> Jesus, and I, they thought Jesus was short at 40 minutes. Um, let's see here. I'm so I'm just reading your comments now. Prick Slickfield. Are you trolling? I, I'm I don't I've lost the plot here. I don't know what's I don't know what you guys have been doing in the in the chat this whole time. I can't see and I don't know where that guy went. Anyway. Okay. As I like to say, I got lost in the sauce in the comments there. Um, so, yeah, that's, that was the 50... Fuck. Loose hairs flying all over the place. Um, thanks. Are you guys are you guys like have like having an argument or something? I feel like I feel like I'm uh I've lost control of my chat is now has now become a bonfire. Um yeah, so anyway, top fifty uh terrible albums by brilliant artists or whatever. Um I think definitely a lot of these were were I I, I haven't heard a lot of them, but I the ones I have heard I agree, except the Beach Boys record. I, I genuinely do enjoy su uh, Summertime in Paradise or whatever. I'm definitely going to be doing some uh, videos on a lot of these. Pro well, ma maybe not a lot, but I'll be doing some videos here or there, whatever, um, on some of these that were on the list. Ideas I've had in the future, you guys can uh, let me know yet, like how you feel about this. Um, I'm sorry, I'm reading the chat again. Yeah. Anyway, so like I'm thinking about doing a, a video on the uh, Eddie Murphy record that had Party All the Time on it. Um, I listened to a little bit of the album and, and yeah, it's bad. Like he's he's doing he's really trying to do a Michael Jackson impersonation um, on it. I figured that might be a fun one to do. Um, Mariah Carey in the 90s did an alternative rock record that one of you guys told me about called... Um, something like mommy some or oh, someone's ugly daughter by chick i think chick was the 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 was going to be the name of the band and someone's ugly daughter was going to be the name of the record or something like that um i think music exists of that album but i don't think mariah carey's doing vocals on it her label forbid forbade it because it was going to take away from her r&b career so they didn't want her singing, so it's like her friend or something doing lead vocals. And if that's the case, then um, then I probably won't do it. Um, I do want to do a Michael Jackson tier list. Um, yeah, Eddie Murphy has more than one album, but I'd want to do the one with Party All the Time on it because um, I think that would be the most interesting one because everybody, everybody fucking knows that song. My girl likes to party all the time. That shit's too high for me, dog. Um, what else? What other ideas? Oh, I think uh, you guys have given given me a lot of ideas. And here, let's see. Sassafras. Oh, yeah, to check out the new St. Anger remaster thing. I think I did do that, actually, when I was drunk one night. They fixed the snare on it and everything. It sounded so much better. New metal, We Are the World, around the time of September 11th. Definitely want to check that out. Mickey at Dolan's REM video. Oh, I, I listened to that uh, EP, and yeah, it was okay. It wasn't that shocking. It was that him doing it in the first place was shocking. Then I just wrote in here, Body Count Sucks, because I was thinking about doing a video where I just talk about how much I don't like Body Count. Um... All right, I think that's all the juice I got left for this uh, live stream. I've run out of my ideas, and I have, I've been talking for probably over two hours now. Um, 
I just love how Rick James is feeling it in that video. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I got uh, so I got the what's his face, Steven Seagal. I got that down on the list of two. I was thinking about doing Bruce Willis, but I don't know. Um, but anyway, I think that's it for me for tonight. Thank you guys for hanging out on a Saturday. Um, probably gonna go get drunk and be hungover tomorrow and have band day and write a new work on a new song. And it was fun. It was fun. Thanks for hanging out. And until next time, have a good rest of your night.